How does Poe use specific words to create images in stanzas 1 through 5? How do these images contribute to the overall mystery and suspense of the poem? In this lesson, you will learn to analyze how imagery contributes to the mood in a poem by examining specific word choice. We've been reading the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Poe was known for his dark and mysterious literature and The Raven is no exception. The poem was published in 1845 and features a narrator who is grief-stricken over the death of his love Lenore. Late one night, the mysterious raven enters his bedroom and speaks one word to the narrator. The narrator is spooked by the raven and considers the raven an evil omen and a sign that Lenore is truly gone. Let's also review some of the things we know about good readers. We know Good readers use evidence from the text to answer questions about the text. When it comes to poems, we know that many poems have images. These images or pictures give readers a mental visual of the plot, the setting, or characters. Today, we are going to be exploring how imagery contributes to the mood of a poem. We are going to use these three steps to help guide us. Reread the poem, underlining all words that paint a picture in your mind. Ask yourself, what types of images do these words paint in your mind? Ask yourself, how do these images create a specific effect on the reader? So let's begin. Remember, we're trying to answer the question, how does Poe use specific words to create images in stanzas 1 through 5, and how do these images contribute to the overall mystery and suspense of the poem? Let's zero in on these stanzas. So I'm going to reread stanzas 1 through 5 and highlight all words that paint an image in my mind. We are only going to highlight words in stanzas 1 through 2 on the screen, but you will continue to highlight all words that paint an image in your mind for stanzas 3 through 5 using the same model above. It's okay if you highlight more words than are seen on the screen. I'm going to highlight Midnight Dreary, Weak and Weary, Napping, Tapping, Rapping, Rapping at my chamber door, Bleak December, Dying Ember, Ghost, Books, and Angels. Now, ask yourself, what types of images do these words paint in your mind? When I think of Midnight Dreary, I think of the night time and a long night. When I think of Weak and Weary, I think of a weak person, either physically or emotionally. Nearly napping paints a picture in my mind of someone sleeping or trying to sleep. And the tapping and rapping at my chamber door makes me think of someone desperately knocking on a door. In the next stanza, Bleak December presents a picture in my mind of snow or the dead of winter, dying em ember paints an image in my mind of a fire that is sizzling out or dying, ghost paints an image in my mind of an actual ghost, books paints an image in my mind of several books or books on a bookshelf, and lastly angels paints an image in my mind of several angels, possibly those with halos. Now, ask yourself, how do these words create a specific effect on the reader? First, when looking back at the highlighted words that create vivid images in my mind, I realized that the words dreary, bleak, weak, and weary all present images of hopelessness. They represent no color and possibly no hope. Napping, tapping, and rapping all present feelings of anxiousness and suspense. What is going to happen next? Dying, ghost, and sorrow all present feelings of death and darkness. Death also presents an effect of terror on the reader.
the words and images we highlighted in stanzas 1 through 2 and you highlighted in the remaining stanzas create a sense of suspense and mystery as the reader does not know what will happen next and the environment itself is mysterious. So, because of this, the mood of the poem would be one of mystery and suspense. Now, I've done some good thinking about this part of the text. My last step is to jot or write down this thinking. First I want to review the original question. What was it that I was trying to find out from the text? How does Poe use specific words to create images in stanzas 1 through 5? How do these images contribute to the overall mood of the poem? Okay, well to help me answer this I have my key details from the text and my notes. First. Several words in the text, such as weary, weak, and dreary, paint key images in my mind. Second, several key words present images of dying and the thought of who is going to die. Dying, ghost, and sorrow as examples. Because the reader is constantly wondering about who may die or the cloud of darkness surrounding the poem, there is an overall sense of mystery. Lastly, Words such as tapping and rapping present feelings of anxiousness and suspense as the reader is unsure of what is to come. Now I am able to tie all of these thoughts together and answer my original question. How does Poe use specific words to create images in stanzas 1 through 5? How do these images contribute to the overall mystery and suspense of the poem? Well, I can answer. In The Raven, Poe uses many examples of imagery. The overall sense of the poem is one of mystery, darkness, and suspense. He uses several adjectives to paint a picture of mystery, darkness, and suspense. In the first five stanzas, he uses dreary, weary, bleak, dying, terrors, and darkness. Dreary and bleak both present images of hopelessness. They represent no color and possibly no hope. Dying, terrors, and darkness all have similar connotations of something dark and evil, possibly even death. Through Poe's use of these adjectives, one can imagine a person dying in the darkness surrounded or filled with fear. These images leave you wondering if the narrator will encounter death and how the fear and darkness will affect his relationship with the raven. So let's review the steps we took to analyze how imagery contributes to the mood of the poem. Reread the poem, underlining all words that paint a picture in your mind. Ask yourself, what types of images do these words paint in your mind? Ask yourself, how do these images create a specific effect on the reader? In this lesson, you have learned to analyze how imagery contributes to the mood of a poem by examining specific word choice.